without me giving away too much of it, I know you use your brand really intentionally during the onboarding process to make sure it feels like part connected to the rest of the culture. I've been at companies before where they have a really strong brand and then all of that is completely lost in the onboard and it's like they're completely disconnected. And I know that's something you both do kind of quite intentionally when you build the onboarding process. So yeah, maybe tell us a little bit more about how you leverage the and brand um, as you build onboarding. I think, yeah, that's a very good question. And actually, now that I'm reflecting on it, now you're, I'm now seeing the brand all the way through our onboarding and now I'm like, are we using it too much, Harriet? In my head, if that's what's been. T- but anyway, I think, yeah, for us, we're very lucky from a lot of different things that one of the questions that we ask in the first week is how many people applied or heard about this company based on the and culture? That is a big thing for us. That is a question we ask on the first day. And what we, and I'm always surprised and always flattered to hear that actually the majority of people put their hands up. That is one of the main reasons why people take an interest why maybe they've applied, maybe why they've been referred. So for us, that is that is a lot. That's a big responsibility to then make sure that from day one, from before day one, that all of these expectations, what their friends have told them, what they've read online, what they've seen on news reports, articles, what they've read in blogs, that we match that from day one. And I think it's for me, Harry, if you don't mind me saying, I genuinely do feel connected to the company. I do genuinely feel like an Andy. I can remember what it was like joining a company where maybe there was a big culture and then landing into that company and being that slight disappointment where you think, well, everybody told me it was going to be amazing. Everybody told me this was great and they were super happy. And I'm not really seeing that. I did feel it. And I did feel it maybe a few weeks into it once I got settled and once I put everything else in mind. But for us, we know what it's like to go into day one where maybe being a little bit flat And for us, we want to make sure that we don't get that feeling. We want to make sure that absolutely every single person who comes through the door had the expectation of and they knew what and was. They maybe learned about it at a boot camp or at a university graduation type event or from a friend or an application. And we want to make sure that, yes, I'm seeing that from day one. And if people say to us, I feel like an Andy, even before day one, that for us is probably the biggest feedback we can get. Yeah, I, do, I just want to pick up on that point you made about seeing it, like actually making it tangible and visible. Because I think there are a few kind of tips we can give you guys for, for your own onboarding and your companies um, from, from what we do in AND. And one of the things that we do with, with our brand specifically is create um, quite a, a visible, tangible community. So, for example, even in the language we use, I don't know how much you've come across in, in social media and so on, but every person who joins our company is an AND. We have AND titles, and I'll talk about that in a minute, AND diversaries. Um, our, our, inductions are actually called and inductions or and boot camps and we have this whole kind of like semantic kind of field around what it is to be in our company that really kind of makes you feel like you can you can be part of it quite quickly um and again we we try and get people to orientate themselves in quite a tangible visible community so with our, our we're building a, a very ambitious in-house hr portal um equivalent to lots of other companies kind of use, use their own you can buy them off the shelf but we're, we're building one for and and in this you for example you have your own, own section for onboarding and you log on and you see every single person who's joining with you in your cohort and they've got their profile pictures they've got kind of a little a profile like bio so um where they've come from like what their and title is um kind of any fun facts about themselves so you can feel like you can you see um there's like a lack of uh, fear taken away from the unknown you can see very much who's who's going to be part of your initial start in the company and and then to, to come onto the and title as well a real kind of uh great way into building an authentic connection to the company to each other is by the way we share something in addition to our job titles so we always think oh you're you're more than just what you do and um, we all have unique passions and interests and hobbies so the and title is an extra to summarize that so for example our founder um paramjit Uppal, he's he's a founder and foodie we have um, dancing dads, mindful meditators. Um, mine is intersectional feminist. So I'm a, a onboarding academy lead and intersectional feminist because I'm really passionate about how overlapping identities affect our experience of privilege and discrimination. So, you know, we all bring something new and Derek can, can share his in a minute as well. Um, he's very, very talented and I don't want to ruin the fun. Um, so, but, but that's just another way again to, to really connect on, on a whole new level. Um, and, and then another, I don't want to talk too, too much of a monopolized conversation, but another thing that we do that's quite interesting with our branding is that the visual branding and you might have noticed um if you look Dara and myself on LinkedIn anyone from the company you'll see that we all have a photo with a red chair 
And the, the red chair is very, and it symbolizes um, that everyone has a seat at the table. And by that, we mean that we all have shares in the company. So we're all owners in and we're all really invested um, literally in the company. And also there's a real sense of this level playing field, this equal opportunity to really contribute our opinions and our voices really matter. We have a lot of say in how things are done in the company. Um, so many different working groups for various communities within the company as well. So there are lots and lots of tricks uh, and tips that we use to actually make sure that our people buy into the company and what it means to really be and Andy. Yeah, I think it's that thing you mentioned, Dara, as well, like it being a feeling, all of that stuff feeds into the fact that it's not like um, you're telling people what the values are in week one or two, you're actually showing them what the values are. And, you know, like you become part of the collective, you know, it's like a rite of passage. Now you have your picture in the big red chair. Now you have your title. It, it does maybe feed into that idea that this is a feeling and you know when you feel like part of the team like often we could say let's test people on the values and and set them some sort of test but that's just a question and answer type thing but the feeling is like the more intangible is probably a better marker of whether actually people do feel settled so i don't know dara if you want to just elaborate on that at all yeah i think that feeling and i i'm going to use the word again guy which is that belonging that like we are always a lot more engaged if we feel like we belong to something that can be belong to a friend group can be belong to a community it can belong to something that we strongly believe in so whenever you're at a company and you believe that you belong there that's huge and like i said that sometimes takes a few weeks and in my past i can think of companies where it's maybe taken a few weeks maybe even a few months to genuinely feel like i belong so it all down to the like you say, the particular stuff we're using, but also the language that we're using too. We do start our communications a, a good chunk ahead. We start at three weeks ahead before they've even started, which means that they're getting that contact three weeks ahead. They're getting to know our names. They know that, okay, well, Dara or Harry, it's going to take me through my onboarding. That's one person that I know if I have any questions, I can contact them straight away. And we're talking to them as if they're future Andes. This is the actual language that we use. Hello, future Andes. So it means that already we're using that language from day one. You've got a connection. This person, we hope, is showing that kind of purpose, that value, that the Andiness that we have, that they're feeling that connection. They're future Andes. That language gets closer and closer. Hello, future Andes. We're getting closer. And then they're starting to get that excitement of, I can't wait to meet this person. This person's super excited. They're talking to me as future Andes. And then when it comes to day one, welcome Andes. And that means that we've made that transition of that excitement, the language that we use into that day when they land. And we do ask again, like the question, what do you think the ad culture is? And maybe I think sometimes, Harry, I think we're maybe a little bit, you know, being a little bit big to sort of ask that on like the morning of day one, right? Where it's like, what do you think the ant culture is from the morning of day one? And we do, we ask it every single time, but they know when they get it from that morning of day one, we think about, okay, well, what have they had? They haven't just had the half a day onboarding with us. They haven't just had maybe meeting icebreakers in the morning. They haven't just had the emails they've had from us, but everything before that is pre-boarding too. The people they've spoken to, the interview teams that have interviewed them, recruited them. These are all current Andes that they've met. So they're already getting an idea of your culture, your community, your company way before that. It's not about just onboarding. It's about that pre-boarding, that recruitment. That is all onboarding to us. And the language and the belonging, the sense of belonging that we use from day one is all part for us onboarding too.